Good afternoon, and welcome to our product showcase, Mixed Reality Layout and Inspection, which features our product, Fab Station Steel. My name is Randy Warner. I'm the CEO of Eterial Realities, the makers of Fab Station, and presenting with me today is Chris Thibodeau. Thanks, Randy. Yes, I'm Chris Thibodeau, and I have been in the construction industry for over 20 years, developing electronic controls and software for the industrial and commercial markets. And I'm happy to be here today to discuss our latest software, FabStation Steel, with you. Let's start with why we develop this software. BIM data is being used extensively in the construction industry from architects, engineers, consultants, and more close to home, the structural steel fabricator. However, after all this time spent BIM modeling, the steel fabrication process still uses TD 2D paper drawings. Our software allows you to enhance your existing method of using the paper drawings and to also use the use of 3D tools to remain competitive in the industry. We have the BIM data, which is necessary for the design as a byproduct of the detailing process. And then we add the augmented reality through the use of mobile devices and uh, the AR to give you a contextualized data. And we have built-in reporting in the back end to give you statistics on your manufacturing workflow. And then we deliver the new manufacturing workflows that allow you to improve the efficiency and reporting while complementing your existing workflow. Let's back up just a moment and talk about the different definitions and uh, realities. Virtual reality is something that most, familiar, most people are familiar with. It's a fully immersive digital experience. You put on a headset, you're transported to the virtual world, and once you don that headset, the real world is just blocked out. With augmented reality, we're overlaying the digital world uh, over the real world through the use of a tablet or a smartphone. And most people know this as a method of getting exercise or chasing Pokemon. And then mixed reality is a combination of the two. So you put on the headset, but with this headset, you can see the real world with the digital world overlaid similar to the augmented reality. And then you can interact with both worlds. So your hands are free. You can touch things in the real world, but then you can also do gestures and interact with the items in the digital world. So what we're doing is we're bringing this augmented reality into the manufacturing floor through the use of uh, Apple, iPads, Android tablets to give you augmented reality experience. You can see in the bottom right-hand corner there, a fabricator is looking at a piece of raw material and that tablet is giving him a view of what the finished product is supposed to look like. He can see the layout, he can see really the 3D aspects of that assembly. And then we have the mixed reality through the Microsoft HoloLens and then the top right-hand corner, you can see the fabric here has now laid out the product. Uh, he's put all the small pieces on. He's just doing a check. And in this instance, he's looking at a menu as he's doing his check. And I'll pass it back to Randy to discuss a case study for this product. Thanks, Chris. Uh, as I said before, I'm the CEO of Eterio, but my background is in steel fabrication. I've been around the steel construction industry most of my life, working at my father's steel shop, Warner Steel. Uh, the inspiration for Fab Station came from working on a particularly uh, interesting project from for the Swarovski family in Vernon, BC. This project required an intricate crystal facade that was to be braced by very expensive pre-cut guy wires that came from Europe. As you can imagine, uh, the tolerances were very challenging. It felt like we were literally building a piano. One of the many, many challenges we faced was were the limitations of the drawings we were using. Laying out the guy wire clips was difficult even for the best of our fabricators. Luckily, the detailer we were, we were working with was using 3D design software and was very good with it. We were able to get 3D assembly models from him uh, which we then brought to fabricators via laptop so we could visualize their build and check their work. It would have taken twice as long without this help. This made me wonder, 
why there wasn't a better way to let our fabricators access those 3D models on demand instead of having to go into the office or a centralized station. Thankfully, now there is a better way with products like FabStation Steel being introduced into the market. FabStation was made possible because technology has finally evolved and has become more commonplace and affordable. Today, most people are comfortable using smartphones and are more comfortable using smartphones and tablets than they are with the clunky computers of old. This need for technology to have to evolve also extends to problems like attracting new talent to the trades. With young workers demanding technical solutions to aid in their work, FabStation provides a solution that increases their productivity right out of the box. Therefore, in an effort to help apprentices learn the trade quicker, we have partnered with technical and trade schools to introduce our software to help apprentices with basic templating work and to help them visualize what they're building. AR technology is also becoming useful in the field for clash detection and will be eventually incorporated, will eventually incorporate 3D scanners to allow for accurate design and placement of steel based on 3D as built models and point clouds. This will make the marriage of steel to concrete much less rocky. However, all of this technology has to fit within the existing workflows to be beneficial. By using highly integrated systems and easy to use interfaces, our system can be learned within hours and is difficult enough and is flexible enough to work within your existing production cycle. For instance, you could have one device shared by multiple fabricators for occasional use. However, you'll most likely see an increase in use over time and would want to deploy a tablet to every station. This gives you the benefit of, of getting full use of progress reporting, having special instructions and revisions available to every fabricator and give them the ability to check for obvious errors on a regular basis. Also with the HoloLens 2 as part of the mix, you'll be able to have a more precise hands-free experience and really understand some more, some of the more challenging builds as well as have a dedicated quality assurance tool. But does te technology have a place in a working environment? What do you think, Chris? Thanks, Randy. Yes, customers have asked us, you know, are you sure about having tablets in the shop? It's really not the best environment for electronic devices and customers are concerned that the hardware won't last long. We can assure you, and Tecla's written a few articles on the topic, which I've shown on the screen there, uh, that, you know, transitioning to tablets on the shop floor is a natural flow for fabricators. Most people already have smartphones and tablets at home. So the use on the shop floor is just an extension of what they already know. The navigation is natural and most fabricators now find they prefer to view the drawings on the tablet that use, than to use the paper method. They're able to pinch and zoom and uh, look at all the different dimensions. And I know that I'm not as young as I used to be and that zoom feature is you know, sometimes required. The other question is what about the devices getting broken? The hardware really is a tool and like most tools, it shouldn't be left in the middle of the shop floor. Workers have experience looking after their personal devices. They know to you know make sure that they're put away properly. And, and most of the fabricators put the tablet and HoloLens on the bench out of harm's way when they're moving things around and they're not using the device. And then the last major concern is distraction from work. Uh, you know, customers are asking, what about the fabricators getting sidetracked with checking email or checking their social media? And there's always that possibility, but it really comes down to the company policies, similar to having PCs in the front office. Uh, you know, most companies will have an acceptable use of technology policy, and you just have to extend that policy out to the shop floor. And because these are not personal devices, the email and the social media shouldn't be installed on them, so it shouldn't be an issue to have them checking their emails or seeing what's going on on Facebook. So let's talk about how we get this information. I discussed 
you know, that 3D BIM data that's coming from the detailer. Uh, when the detailer is done, he's going to export the PDFs for printing anyway. We just ask that the, he also exports the IFC file and the KSS file. And then all three of those files can be uploaded into our software. So really the workflow is instead of printing out all the PDF files, he's spending that time uploading into the software. Once all that information is uploaded into our software, then it's pushed out real time to all the hardware devices on the floor. And I'll pass it back to Randy to go over the licensing. Thanks, Chris. Uh, all of this technology is packaged so you only pay for what you use. Uh, we charge an annual fee per device so you can scale up or down as needed. Also, we don't charge for web portal access so anyone can use our online tools and view production stats without needing a seat. Uh, the value of FabStation is seen in increased quality and efficiency of production for things as simple as eliminating trips to the nearest computer to look at models and catching mistakes um, so corrections can be made immediately. Now, I'd like to show you an example of a potential workflow using FabStation. So here we have a typical beam assembly that has multiple parts. As you can see, our fabricator is loading up the parts and uh, has a look at the assembly drawing to get acquainted with the build. Uh, he's also able to look at the part drawings on the same screen. And with those drawings, he can then check to make sure he has the correct materials. Uh, once he's happy that the materials are correct, he can then look at uh, the 3D models to see if there are any parts that need special attention and take note of their tolerances and connections. Then he's ready to do a quick pre-flight walkthrough of the build using our augmented reality feature. Uh, doing this will give him a better picture of what, he, what he's building before he starts. So once he's completed the build, it's time for the, to inspect the work. At this point, he can use the HoloLens to check his own work or get a dedicated quality assurance uh, or another fabricator to do it for him. Regardless of the process, the HoloLens 2 will be able to give him an unbiased work to within three, an unbiased view of his work to within three millimeters. As you can see, uh, it matches up quite closely. It's hard to notice actually the difference between the, the, the model and the beam. Um, when inspecting, it's important Another note is when you're inspecting, it's important to have a, a, a consistent process and to pay attention, pay close attention to the visual differences. Uh, it's also worth noting that in this example, a fabricator should adapt the workflow to what works best for them and use the tools only when they feel it's necessary. So if it's a simple brace, something they can do in their sleep, you know, you don't have to pull the tablet out or, or or hollow lens out every time. <clears throat> so today our presentation has been about mixed reality layout and inspection. Some takeaways from the session are, don't let the value of the BIM data you're paying for stay locked up in the office. FabStation is a great way to unlock that value by bringing it downstream to your workers in meaningful ways such as augmented digital overlays or easily accessible model viewers. This gives your fabricators a better picture of what they're building and in return gives your stakeholders access to real-time production information. So this concludes our session today. Uh, so we'd like to take some time now to uh, open it up to the floor and answer any questions that you may have. Uh, Chris, I know you had a question. Um, why don't we, why don't you uh, open up the questioning for us? Yeah, there's, there's just a question here, Randy. Uh, you had mentioned some of the technical schoolwork uh, and the usage of technology there. Can you speak more about the uh, technical schools and how they're using the technology? Yeah, great question, uh, Chris. So, um, 
w one of the things we really wanted to do was make sure the apprentices uh, that are joining our workforce and, and, and working their way up to becoming journeymen have the most advanced tools um, available to be able to really kickstart and, and accelerate their learning. So we've joined up with BCIT, uh, one of the biggest technical schools in uh, Western Canada to implement um, our technology in their program and, and be able to A, do some um, at-home work with our tools and some templating exercises, as well as um, an exciting new project that they're starting that will uh, utilize the Microsoft HoloLens 2 in where they join forces between uh, the metal fabricators and the iron workers and create a mini project from fabrication to installation and use the our software and the mixed reality device um, to perform quality assurance checks along the way. So there's some exciting things happening in the, in the industry and this uh, technology, though it's, it's brand new, it's, it's definitely making an impact. Uh, so Chris, I have a question for you. Um, it seems like there'd be a lot of hardware required and a, and a bit of an investment in that hardware. You know, what, what are you, what would we, what would a typical fabricator be looking at, um, to set up for a setup in their shop? Yeah. So that's a, another excellent question. Really with the hardware, uh, the tablets are the main part of the system. So there's going to be a cost for the tablets. Uh, we've, targeted sort of a mid-range tablet for our software. So we're looking in probably about the $500 range, which is a typical, you know, middle of the road uh, iPad or Android tablet. And really it depends on uh, how many stations, how many pieces of hardware that the customer wants to deploy there. Uh, you know, if they could have one tablet that multiple fabricators use, or they could have multiple tablets, one for each fabricator. And so there's costs there on the hardware. And then the HoloLens that we've discussed is really, uh, you know, more of a specialized tool. So that would be uh, one that you might only purchase one piece, one hardware of uh, for the system. And then the QA person would use that uh, to do the QA work and inspect it. Or, you know, maybe another fabricator could use it. But typically you wouldn't have multiple um, HoloLens in the system unless you had a really big shop. And the HoloLens is an emerging technology, so it is quite pricey, uh, much like uh, the Oculus, you know, the pricing started high and it slowly came down. And so we know that the pricing will come down on the HoloLens. It is quite an outlay now, but there's even some positive news there with Microsoft partnering with the U.S. government uh, in the military and selling the HoloLens. So I think it's just a matter of time really before the pricing comes down there. And to kind of make it a little bit easier for customers, what we've done is we will offer the HoloLens app for free so that uh, you're not incurring the extra costs there. Right on. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so this concludes our session for today. Um, please, uh, if you have any questions or have want a demo or, or uh, interest in Fab Station, please contact us. You can uh, visit us at our website, uh, www.fabstn.com or uh, shoot us an email or give us a call and we'd be happy to help you and uh, do a demo on a live project that you have in your shop. Have a great day, everybody. Yep. Thank you for attending our product showcase.